Before I start, I just want to say nobody has any idea what an embodied presence is, but it seemed to have been physical. And, and we have to be willing to stand before the mystery and realize it's a mystery, that maybe there is an embodied existence that is not the same as our embodied existence. And we have to stand before that with humility, that we will understand it more someday, but we can't try to exactly nail down what it means now, because we can't. He seems to be able to come into locked rooms, Jesus does, the resurrected Jesus and all that. He seems not to be able to be recognized. He seems to be able to disappear like that, but it's still an embodied presence. So we have to be willing to accept that it's a mystery that doesn't shake faith, but that we're willing to stand in faith before. They remain startled, they remain terrified. I think that's something that's really important. And I think the importance is this, the acceptance of the resurrection of Jesus is not dependent on an apparition. That's important. It seems not to depend on an apparition. If it did, they wouldn't have been startled this time. Nor does it depend on an earlier announcement of Jesus that this was going to happen. And in your head, you think, oh, yeah, I remember he predicted this. This is it. Doesn't seem to be part of this all. It must be that the spirit of God sent to the apostles after the resurrection, ascension, Pentecost event that revealed to them what resurrection really was. I find that, I take that as a sign of hope for those of us that live two millennia after this enormous watershed event. And just one takeaway for this that I think is significant. Um, the secret of Jesus' life is a secret that has been talked about coming at it from different angles. Certainly vulnerability is part of it. Self-sacrifice is part of it. Thinking of other people before yourself is part of it. Refusing to give back in kind when you are hurt is part of it. Trusting not just God, but goodness is part of it. And forgiveness, look at this right here, it, that is repeated over and over. Forgiveness is definitely part of it. Everything I just said are, are keys to the wisdom that Jesus revealed. And you are either in the group or out of the group, depending on whether or not you grasp that. Now, why is Peter a good person to lead the first group? Because he himself experienced repentance, forgiveness, and a new life that forgiveness brought to him. He understood the message of Jesus in a way that everybody didn't right away. He, so he was pitched perfectly to lead this group that would move forward preaching this message, this secret of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, ascension, and, and Pentecost event, sending of the Spirit. It was all talked about it in different ways, come, come at from different angles. Um, and all of those things that I mentioned are keys to unlocking this secret of Jesus' life. Peter lived that. So he was a good leader as a way to say, you know, okay, yeah, what you just said, that's part of it. You're not perfect. You made a terrible choice. Are, do you see the damage done? Are you sorry? How can you fix it? Come and be part of this movement that bases relationships not on dominance or power, but on forgiveness and mercy and love. It, in your experience of life out of those things, help us to make this happen on a bigger scale. And that's the secret of, that's actually, I think, the message of this, and certainly um, the, the secret, I call it, of Jesus' life, because People seem to either resist it or uh, not really are, are interested in that kind of a, an MO, you know, but that's it. And that I believe is the message of, 
of this um, pericope that we're going to hear on Sunday. <laughs> 